I remember a story that you shared about advice that President Obama gave you. I think it was maybe in the Roosevelt Room. Do you remember that story? Could you share that with us? I remember having a dinner with him one night with other women uh, in the White House that he he actually um, asked us to have dinner with him. So there were maybe 15 women there and it was, I ran over, it was during the, my beginning days there um, and I was doing something on the Hill and I was told, oh, come back, the president's asked you to have dinner. So I go into this thing and it turns out that it's, uh, that Valerie Jarrett, one of his senior advisors had had asked him to do it. And it was because some of the other women were um, complaining a little bit about the male dominated culture at the White House. And he, uh, he said to us, you know, words to the effect of, okay, I get it. And I'm gonna be paying attention to this, but um, I need you all also to know that I chose you because you're strong and because you um, are able to show up and you need, this is life in the West Wing. You need to show up for yourself. Um, and he was true to his words. He was true to his word. He, there was a time when I had, when I went through something that felt a little bullying and I would have never said anything about it. I was standing by, uh, there's a copying machine outside the uh, chief of staff's office, really across the, across the hall from where my office ended up being. But at the time I had an office over in the old executive office building. Um, and I'm sitting there, I'm standing there making copies of something for a meeting. And um, you don't know this feeling, Gary, because you're tall, but um, when you're not that tall, there's a feeling of when someone's standing over you, like casting a shadow on the Xerox machine. And I felt that and I looked around, it's President Obama and he puts his hands on my, kind of like this actually on my shoulders. And he says, um, hey, I heard that, uh, so people are giving you a hard time and I just want you to know I've got your back. And so I didn't hesitate, whether it was walking into the Oval Office in the middle of a meeting when I thought he needed to hear my perspective um, or at any other time, telling him, you know, giving him my counsel, uh, which is a pretty heady experience for um, somebody from Rockwood, Tennessee to be, but, he wanted that. He wanted to know, he wanted you to be um, completely and utterly authentic with him. And so I was. The story I thought you were gonna ask me about, was, which is one that um, I had forgotten, but another young woman um, tells about me and I didn't even remember it, but she wrote an article about it was, her name is Raquel Russell and she had worked for Senator Tom Carper and I'd spotted her on the Hill, thought she was really smart. So recruited her to come to the White House. And she was in the, um, she was uh, in the Office of Public Engagement, I think, doing urban policy. And uh, so she was invited to this meeting and I get to the meeting and I look around and I see Raquel. So in the, in the Roosevelt Room, there's one big table that seats maybe 20 people. And then there are some chairs on the outside of the, perimeter of the room. And I see Raquel sitting in one of those outside chairs and there's, the room's not completely full, but uh, I looked at her and I pointed down at my Blackberry. This is back in the day when that's what we had. And I, and she looked down at her Blackberry and I had written to her sit at the table. And she tells the story of how um, she felt embarrassed that I had noticed and that she realized that she was feeling like an imposter being there and that it made her realize that, and I talked to her later and said, look, if you're in the meeting, it's because I wanna hear your perspective. I want you, you know, showing up for yourself. And by the way, no guy I've ever known, including my son, who was at that point, like 10 years old, would hesitate to go sit at the table. So you need to sit at the table. So she says, she learned a lesson from that. So we, we try to pass that on, but it's not that easy to do. It, it is, is something that, you know, that with my experience, I've learned sit at the table, but Raquel had to 
learned that. Now she's passed it on. <laughs>